So if you're here from TikTok, you'll know that one of the videos I did was about quantum physics and the Bible. And if that blew your mind, then this one might be the one that makes you stop and go, okay, I can't unsee it now. Because today we're talking about something that's called quantum entanglement. It's one of the strangest, most jaw-dropping discoveries in physics and how it actually mirrors the way God works, especially when it comes to prayer and connection and God not being limited by space or time. And I'm not saying the Bible is a physics textbook. I'm saying when you look at what science is discovering about reality, it sounds a lot like what scripture has been saying about God all along. In a previous video that I did on TikTok, I talked about the observer effect in quantum mechanics and how simply observing certain particles will change how they behave. And that alone is just wild. But quantum entanglement, it's like like taking that weirdness and then just turning a dial up about a thousand because it doesn't just challenge how we think about particles, it challenges how we think about distance, time, and connection. So what is quantum entanglement? Let me break it down in just really simple terms. In the quantum world, the world of tiny particles like electrons and photons, there's two particles that can interact in such a way that they become linked or entangled. After that happens, their properties just become connected. So that means if you measure something about one of them, like its spin or its polarization, the other one's state is instantly determined too. Even if they've been moved far apart, like across the room, across a continent, or just across the entire universe. Now here's the part that <laughs> kind of freaked scientists out. That update between between them seems to happen instantly. It's not at the speed of light or not with any delay, just immediately. It's like having two perfectly synced coins. You flip one coin over here and the other one on the opposite side of the universe instantly has the exact same result. No message was sent, no signal traveled through space, there's no wire connecting them, they're just connected in a way that doesn't fit inside our normal understanding of space and time. This idea bothered Albert Einstein so much that he started to mock it. He called it a spooky action at a distance because to him, it sounded like some kind of cheating. It sounded like physics breaking its own rules. Now, Einstein believed that nothing could affect anything else faster than the speed of light. That's one of the foundations of his theory of relativity. But entanglement seems to say that reality has some kind of deep hidden connection underneath what we can see where distance doesn't work the way that we think it does. And for a long time, there was just uh, this thought experiment where people argued about whether it was even real. And then years later, physicists, they actually designed experiments to test it. And these were called Bell tests. It was named after John Bell. And the results were pretty clear. Quantum entanglement is real particles really do show this strange instant correlation. Scientists will tell you that this doesn't mean that we can send secret messages faster than light. It's not like a magical cosmic walkie talkie, but it does mean that at a deep level, reality is just more connected than what we experience on the surface. And that's the part that I wanna sit with because whether you're a Christian, you're curious, skeptical, that should make you stop and go, hmm, if the universe itself has this deep kind of non-local connection built into it, what does that say about the one who created it? So what does this have to do with God? Now let's bring this into the spiritual side. One of the core claims of the Bible is that God is not limited by the things that limit us. So he's not boxed in by distance and time, location, um, human limitations. In Psalm 139, it says, where can I go from your spirit? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make the bed in the depths, you are there. 
And in Jeremiah 23, it says, do I not fill heaven and earth? declares the Lord. God describes himself as present everywhere, not as a physical object stretched out in space, but as a being who isn't confined to it. In Isaiah, God says, before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. That's not just poetic language. It's describing a God who moves outside of our timeline, who isn't waiting for the information to travel to him. And when I look at quantum entanglement, this is built in proven feature of creation where two things can be deeply connected beyond distance. It doesn't quote unquote prove God, but it absolutely illustrates what the Bible has been saying. Distance is not as final as we think. Separation is not as absolute as it feels. And there is a kind of connection that lives underneath space and time. Now, let's talk about prayer because this is where people struggle the most. How can God hear me when billions of people are praying? How can he be close to me when I feel so far away? And how can he comfort someone on the other side of the world while he's also with me? Now, from a human perspective, that does sound impossible. From a God who exists beyond space and time, that's normal. The Bible doesn't just say that God is near us. It says God actually dwells within believers through his spirit. And in Corinthians, it says, but whoever is united with the Lord, one spirit is with him. And Jesus says in John, abide in me and I will abide in you. That's not just pretty language. That's describing a union, a deeper inner connection. Something I like to think of it as almost a spiritual form of entanglement. Not in the physics sense, obviously, but in the sense that there is a real living connection where what God does in his spirit affects your inner world and your heart becomes aligned with his heart and your thoughts begin to sh be reshaped by his thoughts. So when you pray, you're not firing words out into the outer space, hoping that they reach a distant throne. You're speaking from a place of connection. You're speaking to a God who is already present in the room and already present in your body, literally in your past, your present, your future. And when you pray for someone who's far away in another city or in another time zone, you're appealing to the one who is already there too. If even created particles can experience a kind of connection that ignores distance, how much more can the creator instantly be present and responsive to his children? There's another layer in this too. The Bible describes believers as being part of one body in Christ. In Corinthians, it talks about how we are many members, but one body, and that when one part suffers, all suffer. And when one part is honored, we all rejoice. From the outside, it looks like a bunch of separate people just kind of scattered across the globe. But in spiritual reality, there is a kind of shared life, a shared spirit. It's not identical to quantum entanglement, but again, it just rhymes with it. There is visible separation on the surface, hidden unity underneath. Science is saying things that look separate may be deeply connected at a level that you can't see. And scripture is saying people who look separate may be deeply united in Christ at a level that you can't see. Those two ideas don't fight each other. They actually sit side by side and they whisper the same theme. There is more going on than your eyes can process. I wanna say this clearly because I respect both sides. No honest Christian should claim quantum entanglement scientifically proves God. That is not what I'm saying. What I am saying is the more that we discover about the structure of reality, the less it looks like a simple, 
cold machine. And the more it looks like something mysterious and layered and just deeply connected, which is exactly what you'd expect if a spiritual intelligent God designed it. And for the skeptic, maybe this doesn't convince you and that's okay. And maybe this opens up a little space in your mind that just says, you know, reality is a lot weirder than I thought. And maybe the idea of a God who exists beyond space and time isn't as crazy as I assumed. And for the believer, this can deepen your awe. When you pray, when you worship, when you sense God's presence, you are interacting with the same God who baked this kind of wild, non-local connection into the smallest parts of his creation. So here's what I want to, you to take away from all of this. You are not isolated. You are not praying into a void. You are not cut off from God by distance or circumstance. If entangled particles can reflect each other across the universe, how much more can God who made them be instantly present with you in your anxiety, in your questions, in your late night prayers where you think no one understands? Science is just now finding the language for the things Bible has been saying for thousands of years, that there is more than what we can see that we are more connected than we realize and that God is not limited by the things that limit us. And honestly, that gives me a lot of comfort. If you found this interesting and if you want more deep dives where science and scripture meet from quantum physics to the brain, trauma, gut health, dreams, all of it, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button and drop a comment. And tell me what part of this blew your mind the most and what topic you want me to connect to the Bible next. Because the more I study this stuff, the more I realize science isn't disproving God. It's quietly, slowly just revealing how brilliantly he designed reality.